Hello and welcome to this episode of T-Tech. This is part one of three in our series to configure FreeBSD as a firewall. Now, here we're going to talk a little bit about the concepts and how our network is going to look. So, our layout will be like this. We're going to have an ISP up here, our, our internet service provider, and we're going to lease a link to the internet, the internet connection. And that is going to come in to the WAN side, the wide area network side of our FreeBSD machine, and that will be our internet connection. Now, we either have a cable modem there, a DSL, a satellite modem, a fiber modem, any of them. So that is our WAN side, regardless. Now, what we want is we want to have a private side. And that's what our LAN side is, the local area network. And this side is off of the other interface of the FreeBSD firewall. So there's two interfaces, one for our WAN and one for our LAN. Essentially, <coughs> it allows traffic out from the LAN to the internet, but it doesn't allow any responses that we're not expecting and, um, any traffic, in other words, f to come back from the WAN. It's going to just drop it. So every time the LAN sends, it's going to keep state. And that way, when it comes back from the WAN, if it's in the state table, it will let it back through. And essentially, though, uh, if PC2 and 1 here want to communicate, they can just go right through the switch locally because they are on the same network. They're on the same LAN. But if we want to talk, if, if PC2 wants to talk to Google.com, then we have to get the firewall involved. And as well, before we go on to the how the packets flow and everything, um, something to address. The, when I say firewall in the series, I am actually basically referring to firewall and router. Now, they, are, they do have two separate distinct functions but in this case there's overlap between the routing functions and the firewalling functions what I mean by that is they're they're done by the same machine so when I say firewall I mean router alright <clears throat> so we'll move on and look at how packets are flowing so PC2 if he wants to send a packet out to the internet he first needs to know uh, the firewall's MAC address of its IP address, of its LAN IP address. It's got to find the MAC address. To do that, he sends a ARP request packet out through the switch, and the switch is going to flood that, and then the FreeBSD machine is going to see it, and realize it's for him, and he will send that reply back down to PC2 with his MAC address in it, so PC2 will then take that information and put it into its ARP cache. Now though, when he wants to send a packet out, he's going to send a packet with the source 192.168.13 at layer 3. So his IP address, that will be the source. The destination IP address will be Google.com's IP address. So he, he got that over DNS before this happened. And now he sends it up to the switch. At layer 2 though, the source MAC address is PC2 and at the destination MAC address is FreeBSD's Ethernet interface. So he'll send that up and then once it gets through the switch to FreeBSD's interface then FreeBSD can start to process that packet. Okay. Um, when, after it gets there there is something it has to do called NAT or Network Address Translation. Now, in IPv4, at least for the purposes of our discussion, there's two main types of IP addresses. There are private ones, and there are public ones. Now, the private ones are what we use on our LAN, okay? And they are called private because they're not routable on the public internet. Now, the other variety are called the public. IP addresses and they are public because you can route them on the internet 
So routers on the internet will accept packets from those IP addresses as a source. Um, but anyway, FreeBSD will get the packet, and it's still sourced from 192.168.13. Okay, the, the original IP address here. What we're doing with NAT is changing that source IP address to be 192.168.0.25 in this case. And that's on the WAN. Now, normally our ISP will give us one public IP address. Either um, they could give us information to put it there statically for our internet connection, or we could get it dynamically over DHCP. But the, the reason in um, this discussion why it's a private IP address is in the lab network we're going to use, I already have a firewall in place for my network. So I'm already getting a private IP address from that. So that's why you see private ones for the LAN and the WAN. But the concept of NAT is going to work 100% the same even when this is in production with a public uh, IPv4 address. So to summarize this though, we are going to change that source to this source before we send it. Okay, now I'll go on to the next step. Before we do send it though, we do have to find out what our best path is to google.com's IP address. So we look at the destination IP address in the packet the PC2 sent and compare that against entries in our routing table. Basically, they hold the networks that we know about and it's able to find the best path to use for that destination network. So normally, we either specify a default static route if we're setting it statically, or if you get it dynamically with the HTTP, you'll get a default gateway as part of that information. So there will be one main way to send all the other traffic, as long as it's not destined for the 192.168.0.0/24 network, or the 192.168.0.0/20. I'm sorry, 192.168.1.0/24. But as long as it's not listen for those two, the rest of the traffic will go toward the internet. There's, there's one path in and out of the network. So, after we've found the best match, though, then we're just going to select that and send the packet out to the WAN. So that's what FreeBSD does after it gets the packets. And when the packet destined to Google.com's IP address comes back, the source is, of course, going to be Google... Google's IP address, but in this case, the NAT, the network address translation, is going to actually kind of work in reverse, because the destination IP address will be 192.168.0.25, and part of the state information includes that NAT translation. So we're going to take the original address, and we're going to swap the destination of 192.168.0.25 for the destination of 192.168.0.25. 1.3 and after we do that then we'll go back and look at the destination address and then instead of sending the packet out of the WAN the best match will actually be the LAN interface that network that's directly connected so it's going to send that right back down to the switch and the switch will send it back to PC2 and we have our communication so that is how this will be set up and how FreeBSD will provide routing and firewalling to our network. So, again, remember, I, by firewall, I do mean the routing functions as well. I, I'm, I'm using the term as a little bit of overlap, just so there's no confusion. But this was part one of three in our series to configure, um, to configure <laughs> uh, FreeBSD as a firewall. So with all that, I'm Tyler with T-Tech. I really hope you enjoyed this episode, and I'll see you in part two.